Okay, so now we want to look at why your partner or spouse with Asperger syndrome or high functioning autism tends to blame you for the relationship difficulties. If you, for example, are a neurotypical wife in a marriage with a husband with Asperger syndrome, you probably have discovered that whenever there are issues or conflict, you are the bad guy and he blames you for the relationship difficulties. And you may have had the thought many times, he is such a selfish, insensitive, uncaring bastard. And what if I were to tell you that that's probably not the case, rather the fact that he's not responding the way you would hope is due to one of the traits that he suffers from. We're specifically talking about theory of mind deficits. So let's look at that briefly. Theory of mind is an important social cognitive skill that involves the ability to uh, think about mental states, both your own and those of others. It involves the ability to attribute mental states, including emotions, desires, beliefs, and knowledge. Not only does the theory of mind involve thinking about thinking, but it also refers to the ability to understand what... uh, the, the ability to understand that others' thoughts and beliefs may be different from your own and to consider the factors that have led to those mental states. Now, why is this called theory of mind? Well, psychologists refer to uh, this as a theory of mind because our beliefs about what might happen or what might be going on in another person's head are just that, theories. They're kind of Uh, educated guesses. While we make predictions, you know, we we can definitely make predictions, but we have no direct way of knowing exactly what a person might be thinking or what their motivations might be. All we can rely on is our own theories or hypotheses that we develop based on what people say, how they act, what we know about their personalities, and uh, what we can infer about their intentions. So why is this theory of mind stuff so important? Well, the emergence of a theory of mind is really critical during the developmental process. Very young children tend to be more egocentric, as I'm sure the parents in here are aware of, and are often unable to think about the mental states of others. Now, as people age, their theory of mind does emerge and continues to develop. So forging a strong theory of mind plays an important role in our social worlds as we work to understand how people think, to predict their behavior, to engage in social relationships, to solve interpersonal conflicts, and so on. So in order to interact with other people, it's important to be able to understand their mental states and to think about how those mental states might influence their actions. So in other words, you can you connect your guesstimate about what they're thinking with your guesstimate about how they may act based on their thinking. And this is all stuff that you do at a very unconscious level as a neurotypical. These things come come about almost at an, uh, just automatically, it's a natural state of mind, not so much with people with Asperger's. The theory of mind allows people to infer the intentions of others, as well as to think about what's going on in someone else's head, including hopes, fears, beliefs, expectations, and so on. So social interactions, as you know, are, can be very complex, even for neurotypicals. And misunderstandings can make them even more complex and confusing. By being able to develop accurate ideas of what other people are thinking, or at least fairly accurate ideas, we're better able to respond accordingly. So here is the problem. People with Asperger's and high-function autism have great difficulty with this theory of mind business. In fact, there's a lot of research on this that reveals that um, people on the autism spectrum have trouble using theory of mind to make moral judgments in many situations. There was one study that specifically found that Asperger's adults were more likely than neurotypical subjects to blame other people for their problems. And this is what I say, you may have experienced this with your husband who has Asperger's syndrome. 
So the judgments of people with Asperger's rely more on outcome of the incident rather than on understanding the other person's intentions. Let me, re let me state that again. The judgments of people with Asperger's and high-functioning autism tend to rely more on the outcome of the incident rather than on understanding the other person's intentions. Here's an example, and this was part of the research. And uh, in one scenario, James had a, a friend, and they were snowmobiling in an area known for loose snow. So this friend asks James if he should take an easterly route around a row of pine trees. And James had uh, looked, it, looked it up, and he did a little quick analysis while they were on the slopes, and he found out that uh, they, they had an alert that avoiding the west slope was the safest way to go. And so he told his friend that going, you know, the east route would probably be okay. So the friend takes off in that direction, and st and, but unfortunately starts an avalanche, which quickly overtook him and buried him alive. Now, in this scenario, and this was a, just a hypothetical scenario that the researchers put forth before these subjects, the researchers found that people with Asperger's were more likely than neurotypical subjects to blame James for his friend's death, even though James believed the slope was harmless. So that was kind of a, an interesting research project that does reflect the fact that judgments of people with Asperger's do tend to rely more on outcomes rather than on uh, inferring what the other person's intentions were. So that was a long way around the bush to get to the point, and that is this is why your partner or spouse with Asperger's or high function autism does tend to blame you for the uh, relationship difficulties because he's only looking at the outcomes, you know, in other words, what happened after the argument, rather than trying to understand your thoughts, feelings, motivations, intentions, and so on.